how do you know which surgeon to choose if you are going into surgery? I got this question today and I think it's a great question. I've actually been asked it quite a bit, so I thought I would do a quick video to let you know how I personally chose and decided which hip surgeon I wanted to go with for my reconstruction. Real quick background, if you're new to following me here, I, I do have a doctorate in physical therapy. I was diagnosed with adult hip dysplasia in 2014. I went through some really big reconstructive surgeries called periacetabular osteotomies in 2015. A couple years later, I had scopes in 2017. This is for bilateral labral tears and impingement. And then I underwent a reconstructive surgery recently, a week ago. And what I went through, how I would encourage you, it's not a simple thing. It's actually a big deal when you're choosing a surgeon to work with. So I would say talk to your primary care physician. You're probably gonna be referred, in my case, I was referred to an orthopedic doctor. You wanna start asking other people's opinions, reach out for referrals, talk to other physicians. And honestly, I dug in the research. So I got on PubMed and I started reading about labral repairs and revision surgeries and who was talking about the research around that. And that's how I found my PAO surgeon in St. Louis. It's how I found my hip surgeon in Houston. It's how I found Dr. Philippon in Vail, Colorado for my reconstructive surgery. So I dug around in the research. I got on Facebook support groups. So there's a PAO support group on Facebook. There's a hip labral Facebook page. So use all of the resources virtually to help you to find your community, no matter what your diagnosis is or what is happening. Talk to the people who've been there, done that. Talk to the people who have healed, who were their doctors. Look at the research, dive deep. And actually my surgeon in Houston, he wanted to get Dr. Philippon's opinion on the surgery. And I thought, how interesting, you know, I might just go straight to the source. Now I have traveled a lot for surgeries. I live in West Texas. I traveled to St. Louis for the PAOs, Houston for the first scope, Vail, Colorado for the second scope. But I found it's important. This is your health. And especially for my case, long-term preservation of my hip joint. You want to go with somebody who's doing a lot of these. Experience matters. <laughs> it really does. Here in my area, there's only two surgeons who do labral repairs that I'm aware of, and they only do them rarely every once in a while. If I'm having work done, I want this to be done by somebody who's had years and years of experience and had time to perfect their craft, if you will. So I chose Dr. Philippon, Mark Philippon. He's in Vail, Colorado. I was very impressed. And when you see these physicians, know that you're probably gonna have to gather all of your medical records. I talk about this a lot. Whether you've had MRIs or CT scans or any imaging, you wanna get a copy of the imaging CD as well as the report. You're probably gonna have to mail that off to them to do a film review and get everything set up for that. But from the moment I walked in the door, things were different. They had hip chairs, which sounds silly, but I've been to so many different orthopedic doctors and they don't have hip chairs. They had special hip chairs there. They worked as a team. I saw a physical therapist. I saw the physician's assistant, the fellow. I had my strength evaluated, my range of motion evaluated, and everybody worked together. When we looked at the imaging, everybody was in the room. The surgeon, the fellow, the PA, the PT, everybody was there and that team approach is very rare, but very powerful. Even the MRI that they have, they have a special MRI that has a magnet that is much, much stronger than a typical one. Usually for a hip, you have to get an arthrogram and they do an MRI arthrogram. They actually inject contrast into your hip, fluoroscopy guided, which hurts, and do the imaging. Here, they didn't even have to do an injection. And that MRI was so powerful that it did cartilage mapping and they could see the labrum and they could see everything to really help them get a game plan for the surgery. That's really powerful. When I went there, I tell my private health coaching clients to make a binder with everything, your imaging and, and keep everybody's business card and contact information. They gave me this. They gave me a binder with everything when after I had my surgery and it has everything. It's got medication lists, it's got milestones, it has everything here for you. It was just next level. 
So you're gonna ask questions. You're going to see how responsive the team is. They emailed me back. They answered all of my questions, which was so powerful. They have paperwork that tells you not only what your medications are and what you take, but why you're taking them and using them. In my case, it was a revision surgery. I've had three surgeries on each hip prior to going into the surgery, and that's a lot of scar tissue, that's a lot of people that have been in my hip, and it was just next level. They took very, very good care of me from the beginning, and that's what you wanna look at. You wanna ask, what are, what's gonna be my post-op care? What's gonna be my, my rehab? When do I start to see the physical therapist? They actually, in this binder, pretty amazing, showed me exactly what they did in my hip and with pictures and all of the stuff and then showed me um, imaging of all of that and went through all of this with me. It was incredible. So really how you pick the right person, you gotta ask questions and there's no way around it. It's gonna take time. You wanna do your research, but this is your health and this is your wellness really. I mean, health is wealth and you wanna be putting time and energy into researching that. We do that with other things, right? We research our career, we research different colleges that we may apply to or go to. You're gonna do the same thing with finding the right doctor. And know that you may see several. You may go and get one opinion and then you may go get another opinion. And know that you as the patient, you're choosing who you're gonna work with. You can hire or fire anybody at any time with that. But in that office visit, when I went in there, I was blown away by the level of care, by working as a team. And right after surgery, they this is interesting too. For my previous surgeries, I always had general anesthesia. For this surgery, they actually do an epidural and they do an FA nerve block catheter. And I never had that done before, so I asked, hey, why do you do this? I've always had general before. And they said, because when we do the epidural and the block, it completely relaxes the muscles in the hip, in the leg, so we get better traction, so we get better visualization of your hip joint. Makes sense, kind of cool. Now, Dr. Philippon actually invented labral reconstruction. So what they did in my case was they actually took a graft of my IT band and they built me a new labrum. Very cool stuff. He's the man when it comes to hip labrum. That is all he does surgeries on is hip labrums. So my doctor in Houston, while he was amazing and I really like him and I feel like he helped me a lot, as far as label reconstruction, he says he does. he's done about 150 to 200 total in his career. Dr. Philippon does 250 to 300 a year. This is all he specializes in. So experience really, really matters when choosing who you're gonna work with. And even day after surgery, when I woke up, I went to physical therapy. Again, everybody works very closely as a team. They gave me my binder. They went over all of my hip precautions. They went over all of the information and I started PT immediately, twice a day, every day, except for Sunday. And I was really impressed by that, especially as a PT. They get you up, they get you moving, they get you to, because we wanna prevent that scar tissue. That was my biggest concern. And there is a very, very small dose. I asked about that. What about scar tissue? This is my fourth hip surgery. There's a very low dose of a blood pressure medication. It's teeny tiny, we cut it in half and we take that for six weeks for scar tissue. There's a supplement called Fisetin that the Stedman Clinic, which is where Dr. Philippon is and has researched, has found that it's really helpful with preserving the joint and helping to prevent osteoarthritis. They're the ones doing the research. And when you specialize in one thing, you get really, really good at that skill versus if you're seeing an orthopedic surgeon who maybe he does hips and knees and a little bit of everything. So you really wanna work with those people that have really crafted their skill. And I was very, very impressed by that from the get-go. Even there was a cream that he created. It's a topical Voltaren Vermapil cream and it's just for his revision patients that helps with it's absorbed in the skin. It helps to prevent scar tissue. It's Vera Permil. It's a calcium channel blocker and it prevents the release of collagen. 
from fibroblasts, so scar tissue does not form. Very cool. The Voltaren is an NSAID and it prevents chronic inflammation, which can lead to thickening and scarring of connective tissue. Again, these this is his jam. This is what he does and they're doing so much research. So ask questions. The other cool thing is, they actually gave me this. I've never had a surgeon give me like a goodie bag. And in here was the binder, it was also all of my dressings that I had. Honestly, in the past, Oftentimes we would have to go to the pharmacy and purchase all of this. And these are waterproof dressings because you start pool therapy right away. So they want you in the pool, moving around once or twice a week. They want you to start physical therapy. The other thing that they did that was amazing that I have never seen before is they have an app that has all of the PT exercises and videos and your physical therapist gets access to this so that everybody gets to see your rehab protocol, everybody's on the same page. And that's, I think, the beauty of the Studman Clinic is everybody works together as a team. Now he is world renowned. He travels and teaches a lot of different orthopedic surgeons and conferences and things. And he works with a lot of Olympic athletes and athletes all over the world. And that's how I, I chose him. I did a lot of research. So I don't think there's any shortcut with that. I think you do want to put some time into that. You want to ask around. You want to look at PubMed, look at the research. Who's doing research around what you're having done? Look in Facebook groups, talk to other patients. The nice thing in this virtual age is we can get a lot of information and talk to a lot of different people. And that's what I always love to do is talk to the people who've done and healed from whatever it is that you're going to and meet with them because you're gonna find some really great, fantastic information, lots of great tips. If you're following me over on Instagram, you can see that I'm sharing, I'm documenting this process and I'm saving it in the highlights because somebody else may come and you wanna pay that forward. And it's funny how this whole thing works. My CPM, it's a continuous passive motion machine. It's actually usually used after knee surgery and we use it because when you bend your knee, you bend your hip too, so it's that movement because you can't actively flex your hip flexor after hip surgery. So I can't actively lift my head, my leg, my hip right now. And it broke last night. And so they came to switch it out. And the young man who came, he, I told him that I had hip surgery. He said, oh yeah, I just tore my hip labrum. <laughs> and so I said, here's who you need to see. And I wrote everything down and I gave him all the information because we pay it forward. I think that's what we're here to do when you're going through a healing journey and we learn what works for us, we pay it forward and we wanna help other people on that process. And that's how I found Dr. Philippon. Lots of research, lots of talking to other people and trust in yourself. This is the most important thing. If you take anything away from this video, I want you to remember this. If you don't have peace about something, don't do it. If you don't feel like you jive with that doctor or surgeon, if you don't have a connection, if you get an EBGB feeling, say no and keep looking because there is a level of trust with working with a surgeon or a doctor or anybody on your healing team. That is really, really important. Hope you found this helpful. If you liked this video, stay tuned. I'm sharing lots of stuff along this surgical journey together. We're keeping it real, real and raw. No makeup. <laughs> My accomplishment for today was showering and we're one week post-op and we're on this journey. We're learning together. And I want to encourage you, you have everything within you that you need to heal. Trust that intuition, your inner wisdom. Use that and honestly view this as an interview process to find the right person, the right fit to help you on your healing team. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for being here.